Let, let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. I will ask our scout, Girl Scouts in the room, please come forward. They will be leading us in the pledge today. And uh, please remain standing after the pledge. <coughs> Got our flag right over. <laughs> OK. You ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It always sounds so much better when we have youth helping us out. Please remain standing by the scouts. I'll let you go back to your, uh, your stand in front of your seats there. We're going to do a uh, moment of silence for a, uh, another Madisonian we lost in the past week. We've uh, often recognized those who have left their impact on Madison. And this is for someone who really has left his impact on Madisonians. Starting on the football field through his coaching and by bringing out the best of every player, Coach Monica, or just Coach, as so many called him, taught lifelong skills, served as a mentor for years after the players graduated. Many, <laughs> excuse me, many who have uh, become very successful uh, in their uh, business lives, and they trace it all back to on the field with Coach Monica. Coach Ted Monica, lifelong, or longtime Madison resident, died in his home on March 3rd, surrounded by his family. He was 90. He was born and raised in East Orange, born on May 5th, went on to earn his undergraduate degree from Panzer College, which is now Montclair State, and a master's degree in educational administration. He is uh, part of our greatest generations, having served our, in our armed sort armed services in the Marine Corps during the height of the Korean War. He earned his Purple Heart in 1953. In 1954, returned from the war, accepted his first position as assistant coach with Jonathan Dayton Regional High School in Spring Springfield, where he met the love of his life, the late Pascalina Lee Monica, also known as Lee Bird, and they got married on June 26, 1954. In 1955, he was offered a position of physical education teacher and head football coach by the Madison Board of Education and eventually served as director of athletics for many years. He, he and his wife Lee relocated to Ma Madison on Britain Street with their young family and eventually moved to Westerly Avenue, which has uh, remained a family home to now. He created a tradition of excellence and put Madison on the map for high school football. It's been said, coach took mediocre a a athlete, athletes and turned them into champions. Under his guidance, he won nine state championships, 38 game winning streak. The high school football program and uh, many other conference records are still stand throughout the years. At one point, Coach Monica was named the all-time winningest coach in, in New Jersey. Through the 60s, under the guidance of Coach Vince Lombardi, he ran the NFL draft for the Green Bay Packers. He was also involved locally, working with the borough, overseeing the Madison Recreation Department for many years. Retired from coaching in 81, with a record of 177, 50, and 4, but remained active with Madison High School football program the rest of his life. He and his wife retired in 1999, and in 2007, the Board of Education named Madison High School football stadium in his honor, Ted Monica Stadium at Twombly Field. He was predeceased by his wife, Lee Bird, in 2011. He is survived by his four children, Mark, Patty, Bob, and Ted Jr and eight cherished grandchildren. Let us take a moment to remember Coach Ted Monica and to recognize his immediate family and expanded family of hundreds of players from over the years. Thank you. Be seated. We have no minutes for approval today. Um, a couple of um, things to report, and then we have a proclamation to uh, present, which is why we had our Girl Scouts lead today. And uh, I was just talking to a couple of scouts who were here a couple of years ago, more than a couple of years ago, for uh, to learn about local government. And last week I had Cub Scout Pack 226 here, 
to take a tour and learn about local government. And then what we do is a mock council meeting. They propose an ordinance that would have banned homework in Madison. <laughs> but after resident input, which included a mother of one of the scouts, they uh, compromised and revised the ordinance to limiting homework to 30 minutes. But just for all the students in the audience, that law cannot take effect, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, um, I want to talk a little bit about the coronavirus. Uh, last Wednesday, I held a meeting and uh, just discussed the borough's response to COVID-19. Attending the meeting were department heads, including our health officer, Mike Fitzpatrick, Nurse uh, Marlene Dolan. Also attending were representatives for the school district, St. Vincent's, Drew University, and the Madison Area YMCA. So the goal was to make sure we all had the most up-to-date and consistent information. And at this point, there are 11 reported cases in New Jersey, which is double, nearly double from yesterday, and it includes a case as close as Berkeley Heights. And Governor Murphy has declared a state of emergency, our first statewide health emergency ever, de ever declared. As was shared last week, we know it is highly contagious, but 80% of the cases are mild, which is a good news, but very a challenge, because someone could be a carry carrier without even knowing it. We also know that very few children have shown symptoms, but that doesn't mean they're not getting it and passing it on to others. It's very important to know that the seniors and infirm are the most vulnerable, so please take precautions when visiting and make sure they have the support and we all check in on them. And we need to take care of ourselves by washing our hands, leaving our contact, and avoiding large crowds. And if you get sick, stay home. And if it's you are showing symptoms, please make sure it gets reported. I'll, uh, before I go to the rest of my uh, comments, um, ask our administrator, Rick Cody, to add anything that may I might not have covered. Well, sure. Well, Mayor, we have the most current information is updated on a regular basis by Michael Palessi on the borough website, which is rosette.org. So if you go to that, you can track along and follow the latest advisories from the CDC and from the Madison Board of Health. And we just want to reinforce that the governing body obviously has taken this very seriously. And our first responders, which are the police, fire, and ambulance, are prepared and ready to respond in the event of an outbreak of the virus in Madison. They are routinely trained and complete uh, frequent emergency response drills of this nature. So this is something that they're ready for and they study for and practice. And in communication with the Morris County Office of Emergency Management and local area hospitals, we have ample volunteers and first responders are ready and prepared to assist in the event of an emergency. So at this point, we're recommending caution and safe health practices. Um, we do have a, a top-notch health department, and on a daily basis, they're interacting with all the schools, Drew University, the YMCA, large area employers, just sharing best practices uh, in terms of how to prevent the spread of this illness. And as the mayor said, we have no reported confirmed cases in Madison or Morris County. So right now, we're doing OK. Uh, we would want to reinforce that as employers may need to do, take certain actions, the borough will try to maintain normal hours because we're like the employer of last resort and there are services that you just can't stop providing for police and fire and health and those services. So we will maintain normal business hours and we'll work around whatever the restrictions are we have to, but we're prepared if to work remotely if we have to and we'd encourage and we'll put guidance up online about how residents can still participate uh, with the borough government, even if it's done electronically, if that happens. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to announce the employee for the month of March, Linda Sawyer, our Purchasing Personnel Director, um, for her competently and efficiently handling her many duties as qualified purchasing agent while consistently saving the borough money, and for maintaining an open door policy as our Personnel Director and promptly answering questions and personal issues for all borough employees. It's so important to have that support and her work to save us money through the uh, purchasing agent. That's the good news is, the bad news is, she is retiring this spring, so we will uh, certainly miss her dedication and expertise for many years working for the borough. And our anniversary for the month of March, Lieutenant Brian Tappan of the Fire Department is celebrating 25th, 20th rather, 20th anniversary on March 6th, just celebrated. So if you see him, please congratulate him. And now, I'm gonna come down and present a proclamation. Oh, 
Scott's always prepared. <laughs> All right, Girl Scouts and leaders, come on up. Madison Harding representatives. Thank you for all coming. All right, this is a proclamation for Girl Scout Day, March 12th, 2020. Whereas Girl Scout Day com commemorates the day in 1912 when Juliet Gordon Juliet Gordon Lowe founded the first ever Girl Scout troop meeting in Savannah, Georgia with 18 girl members. And whereas March 12th is also known as the birthday of Girl Scouts. And whereas in addition to organize their first Girl Scout troop, Juliet Gordon Lowe also organized enrichment programs, service projects, outdoor activities, and adventures for this troop. And whereas originally named Girl Guides of America, the Girl Scouts have grown to over three million members, building girls, building girls of courage, confidence, and character who become responsible citizens and make the world a better place. Whereas Girl Scouting has always been an organization run by women, for women, and it has been estimated that since its inception, 50 million girls and women have been members of this organization. And whereas the Madison Harding Service Unit of the Girl Scouts of Northern New Jersey is proud to have a total of 44 troops in kindergarten through 12th grade, consisting of 527 girls with approximately 90 leaders. Now, therefore I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim March 12th, 2020, as Girl Scout Day and extends thanks and appreciation to the Girl Scouts for their service to our community. One of our leaders want to say a few words, if you want. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Mayor. We just want to thank you for having us here. We feel so honored, and we're happy to contribute to our beautiful town of Madison in any way we can. Thank you. And I understand you have a little gift for our council members. Yes. Yes. Oh, boy. Hey, Liz, get ready. Let it, let it be known. No, 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 this is not an exchange you were talking about. <laughs> Thank you very much. No Thank you. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. That's so Thank nice of you. Thanks. And thank you for uh, leading our. Wow. Thank you for leading our pledge. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you and enjoy your. They're scouting. No thin mints. We have so going home with it. The newest, newest oh, cookies. Oh, nice. Newest cookies. One for the office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very much. All right, move on to reports from committees. Uh, well, public safety, Ms. Bailey. Right, I'll first start with planning board. Uh, the planning board um, last week approved the open space recreation historic preservation element of the master plan. And this helps the open space um, committee to obtain grants and gives us guidance on um, the issues of open space recreation and historic preservation. From the police department, oh, and you can see it online, too, um, if you want to read the report. Uh, from the police department, on Wednesday, March 4th, 2020, Sergeant Lisa Esposito officially retired from the Madison Police Department. She was appointed as badge number 116 on July 17th, 1995. She began her career following her graduation from the Morris County Police Academy. And she comes from a long line of law, law enforcement officers. Her brother Mark is a retired captain with the Morris County Sheriff's Office. Her grandfather, Joseph Chirolanzo, was the chief of the Madison Auxiliary Police for over 50 years. Her father, Peter, was a special officer with the police, Madison Police Department. And after being promoted to sergeant in 2016, she was reassigned to the patrol division as a patrol supervisor on squad B. During her career, she was instrumental in starting several community service projects, like the Senior Snow Shoveling Program, 
Ride Safe Bicycle Helmet Program and Project Lifesaver. A passionate DARE officer for many years, Lisa also served as the department DARE coordinator for the past six years. Sergeant Esposito has the distinct honor of being the first woman to hold the rank of sergeant in the history of our agency. And Madison thanks Lisa for her dedication and service to our police department and our community. She served for 25 years. Also this week, uh, Patrol Officer Jerry Mantone has successfully completed his probationary term with the police department. And he's done a great job and is being signed to the patrol division. And on March 2nd, 2010, Detective Ken Shannon conducted a drug awareness presentation at the Madison Elks Club. This presentation outlined the current trends being seen in our era, area and around the state. And then from the fire department, um, <coughs> they during the month of February, they responded to 17 general alarms, 16 still alarms, 15 investigations, 25 EMS calls, 56 fire prevention inspections were performed, and 10 smoke seal, uh, resale inspections were done. And on March 3rd, we also supplied mutual aid to Cedar Knowles. And the fire department, police department, and ambulance squad are all monitoring the coronavirus and have plans in place to deal with a response to such a call that will best protect our first responders while dealing with a uh, suspected infected patient. These response procedures are based on the CDC guidelines for first responders. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And with Public Works Engineering and also for the Finance and Borough Clerk for Carmela Vitale, Ms. Byrne. Thank you. From Public Works uh, and Engineering, the uh, Highland Avenue water main is being replaced. And we had a beautiful day, 70 degree weather, and I hope everyone was out in the backyard doing a spring cleanup because we are now picking up lawn waste along with recycling and garbage. Um, from the finance department, the 2020 municipal budget will be introduced at the March 30th council meeting with a public hearing slated for April 27th. It provides for a 2% tax increase, a $2 million electric dividend, full funding of all municipal services, some extra staffing for DPW and police to fill vacancies, a targeted electric rebate of $200 for income eligible customers, 200,000 for new clean energy initiatives such as electric charging stations and community solar and over seven and a half million dollars in capital investments. Residents are reminded that the filing deadline for tax appeals is April 1st. Forms are available online and in the clerk's and tax assessor's office. Targeted electric rebate forms are available online and in the utility department and clerk's office. The filing de deadline is December 1st. And from the clerk's office, in anticipation of the June 2nd primary election, the filing deadline for nomination petitions for county committee member as well as municipal office is March 30th, 2020. Forms are available in the borough clerk's office. Voter re registration forms, as well as mail-in ballot applications, are also available in the borough clerk's office or online at morriselections.org. The deadline for new voter registration before the June primary is May 12th. As a reminder, pet licenses were due before February 29th. There's a $15 annual fee plus a $10 late fee and up-to-date rabies vaccine info are required to obtain a license. Please call the clerk's office for more information. And then all elected and appointed borough officials are required to file an annual financial disclosure statement with the state of New Jersey before April 30th. Each of our information regarding filing will be emailed to all required to file. Thank you. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Director of Business Development and the Downtown Development Commission, May Day in Madison is scheduled for Saturday, May 2nd. Donation envelopes will be included in the March utility bills. The T-shirt art contest information will be distributed to the schools this week. The Madison Farmers Market will return on Thursdays, beginning May 21st, and run through November 19th. The market is relocating to the east end, Greenwood Avenue, of Dodge Field. The hours will remain the same from 2 to 2 in the afternoon to 7 p.m. Planning for the DTC, a sponsored Rose City Summerfest event is underway. It will be held from noon to 6 p.m. on Saturday, May 30th. 
from the Chamber of Commerce. The Taste of Madison is Monday, March 23rd at Brook Lake Country Club. Tickets are currently on sale at tasteofmadison.org or at Gary's Wine and Marketplace. <clears throat> the Easter Fun Fest is Saturday, April 4th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. downtown. The Madison Community Arts Center, <clears throat> the pre-summer concert series is slated to open on Friday, May 1st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. outside on the outdoor stage of the Art Center. Other concerts will be held on May 15th, May 29th, and June 12th. Discussions have begun with the folk project about producing concerts at the junior school with dates October 4th, November 1st, and December 6th. Madison Arts and Cultural Annual Fundraiser will be Saturday, September 19th, date pending approval by the school district. In the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, there's been an extraordinary amount of activity at the METC the last few months. In December 2019, mold was discovered in the building's lower level, which affects public areas of the museum, as well as the artifact collections room. Working closely with the borough, the museum has contracted a firm to conduct a remediation scheduled for early April. For nearly five years, the Board of Trustees and staff have been developing several long-term strategic initiatives to create a sustainable future, including some options such as relocating the entire museum, moving the collection, adding onto the building, and moving the education programming. The museum will expand all educational programming, including workshops, school field trips, lectures, and other events to 23 Main Street, former site of short stories. At the same time, the staff will be temporarily relocate part of the collection to clear the lower level area as they conduct the mold remediation. The plan going forward after remediation will be to design and create a new visible storage collection facility on site. At the same time, the ongoing historic renovation and restoration project continues, and the museum is working with Morris County Historic Preservation Trust and Madison Open Space to provide funding for the activity to preserve one of Madison's most iconic buildings. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. And health, Ms. Cohen. Um, the plastic bag ordinance is going well with random stops at stores. There seems to be reasonable compliance so far and interest by vendors and merchants to comply with the intent of the ordinance. As the mayor talked about already, but I'm going to add to it, COVID-19 coronavirus is being consistently monitored by the Madison Department through observation and review of state and CDC input and local health collaboration with the County Office of Health Management. There are currently no confirmed cases in New Jersey. There are 11 presumed cases. Over 25 investigations have been performed and have turned up negative. Um, simple steps that you can take to prevent the spread of the flu and common cold will also help prevent COVID-19. Wash your hands often with soap and warm water. If soap and warm water are not available, then use hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid contact with people who are sick. Stay home while you are sick and avoid contact with others. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or sleeve when coughing or sneezing. Routinely clean, frequently touch surfaces. In addition, practice social distancing of six feet when in crowded areas. This is, not a time, <laughs> this is not a time to panic, but a time for preparation. We ask that you do your part to help keep Madison safe and healthy. Please share only facts, not fear, and refer to credible sources like the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, the New Jersey Department of Health, or ROSENET to obtain updated information on COVID-19. Information from these organizations can easily be found on our COVID-19 update page at www.rosenet.org. The Council Administration Health Department and Office of Emergency Management would like to emphasize that this is an emerging, rapidly evolving situation, but we remain vigilant in providing updated information and guidance as it becomes available. The safety of all residents is our highest priority, and we assure you that we stand ready to respond should COVID-19 appear in Madison. For the latest information, visit www.rosenet.org slash 1250 slash coronavirus virus hyphen updates. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. And utilities, <clears throat> Ms. Orlick. Thank you, Mayor. The Electric Department reports that there were no emergency call-outs during the last two weeks. During this time, the department made continued progress on utility pole transfers and replacements, including from storm and tornado damage. 
The electric department also assisted with the installation of the first four smart meter gatekeepers last week. These units are the collectors that automatically read the advanced electric meters and water modules that have been installed by our electric and water departments. Three of these gatekeeper units transmit the collected data via the borough's fiber network and one communicates via cellular network. Together they can read all of the 2,500 plus electric smart meters and 500 or so water meter modules that have been installed. As our meter readers decrease their time spent driving around reading meters, they can spend more time installing new smart meters which will speed up full deployment in the borough. This in turn will move us closer to rolling out a new electric rate structure with advanced capabilities to help customers cut their electric costs and reduce their carbon footprint. Special thanks to electric department head Jim Matina and his crew for their help in installing the new gatekeepers and helping us take this critical next step in the deployment of our advanced metering infrastructure. Thanks also to Chief Lou DeRosa, Russ Brown, Jim Sanderson, and Jim, Trim Jim Trimble for their help in reaching this important milestone for our utilities. From the water department, the department installed a new one and a half inch water service to a newly subdivided property on Woodland Road and provisions have been made at the new dog park for the installation of a new barrier-free water fountain and bottle filler with a dog bowl. Uh, as with the electric department, installation of smart meter water modules is ongoing. That's all for tonight. Thank you very much. Com communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Council uh, received an email dated February the 28th from resident Victoria Elman um, on Elm Street regarding the electric dividend. Thank you. And now we're on to our first of two invitations for discussion. This is limited <coughs> to normally to our agenda discussions, which there are none, so you, you may comment on any of the resolutions. I will go through these resolutions so you are aware of them and you'll understand what's in the consent agenda later on. If you want to comment on anything else besides these resolutions, that time will be coming up after, very shortly, so stay tuned. <laughs> so resolution 92 is resolution rejecting all bids for the Madison Police Firearms Training Facility and authorizing a rebid. All the bids were substantially uh, exceeded the cost estimate for the project. Resolution 93 is requesting that uh, Governor Phil Murphy uh, to Governor Phil Murphy pre to preserve Daytop Mendham Adolescent Substance Abuse Treatment Center it has been uh, a very important program for uh, those uh, youth and um, young adults fighting uh, drug addiction. Uh, resolution 94 is requesting to the freeholders to reduce the posted speed limit on Green Village Road from 35 to 30. This is with respect to the fact that it is a winding, somewhat winding road and with two schools and many residents along that road. Resolution 95 is authorizing a change fund for the borough clerk's office so they can make change for cash payments. This uh, fund will uh, be $50. Uh, resolution 96 is uh, authorizing a settlement agreement with Fair Share Housing Center. Uh, resolution 97 is authorizing the 2020 uh, grant application by the Madison Free Public Library pursuant to the uh, New Jersey Library Construction Bond Act. This the estimated uh, project cost is basically $2.9 million with the uh, application for the um, grant is $1.4 Four seven million um, with the, the the borough would uh, provide nine hundred thousand from general capital, and um, the library con contributing an additional five hundred forty thousand dollars for the matching grant. Resolution ninety eight is uh, approving raffle license for the PTSO Madison High School. So you can comment on any of those resolutions. If you wish to comment, please step forward, say your name, your address, and the resolution you're speaking about. And if wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. Again, as mentioned, no agenda discussions. Um, will the clerk please read the statement for ordinances for hearing? The ordinance scheduled for hearing was introduced by title and passed on the first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on February the 24th, 2020. All, uh, it was posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the general public testing scene. All right, before I call up our first hearing, I just want to uh, let you know that this ordinance will be tabled, but we will have the hearing and a new ordinance, Ordinance 9, will be introduced. We'll explain that when we get to the introduction. 
So I call up Ordinance 6, 2020 for second reading. Ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison establishing Chapter 195-36.1 of the Madison Land Development Ordinance entitled Solar Energy Systems. I open the hearing. Anyone wish to comment on Ordinance 6, which will be tabled? Please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Can I have a motion to table this ordinance? Mayor, I move to table Ordinance 6-2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that number will be retired. And now we're on to our second of invitations for discussion. This is now when any residents can comment on any topic. Please step up to the lectern, state your name, your address. Write the same on the clipboard. Try to keep your comments to three minutes, but I will give you a one minute grace and close you off at four minutes. Anyone wish to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. We move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for first reading. We'll have a hearing date set for March the 30th, 2020. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading. Ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 7, 2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 15 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Downtown Development Commission. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 7 2020. Second. And this is uh, part of our uh, Committee on Committee's work and uh, also making it uh, the bylaws and the ordinance consistent. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Hurley? Yes. Ordinance 8, 2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $300,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a street sweeper and accessories for the Department of Public Works. Mayor, I move Ordinance 8 2020. Second. And uh, typically we hold off on capital ordinances until the budget has been uh, formally adopted, but as with roads, we do early to get ahead of the bids, and this is a lo very long lead item, and so we want to get it uh, up, up and operational while the other one is still working. <laughs> working, yes. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Early? Yes. Ordinance 9, 2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison. Madison establishing Chapter 195-36.1 of the Madison Land Development Ordinance entitled Solar Energy Systems. Mayor, I move Ordinance 9-2020. Second. And as mentioned, this is replacing Ordinance 6-2020, and the main thing is to, uh, we are in the process of working for community solar. We want to make sure that uh, that is, uh, can happen in Madison, where uh, residents that may not be able to do solar in their own homes or, or an apartment can be part of a solar complex. Other uh, comments? Yeah, I'd like to just give some context for this ordinance, which uh, is, this, is the same for the one that was tabled. So this is really a general statement about the purpose and the nature of this this ordinance. It establishes land use rules for where and how solar photovoltaic panels can be installed on residential and commercial property. So the purpose of the ordinance is to regulate how the panels look, how they can be mounted, and so forth. This ordinance was the product of a lot of review and research, a lot of analysis and comparison, considerable professional expertise, and it was reviewed by members of the Madison Environmental Commission who provided detailed comments on the draft ordinance. Um, I was proud to contribute to this effort as a member of the Land Use Committee together with uh, my colleague Astri. And I think this is an ordinance that uh, reflects a lot of hard work and deliberation, and I'm excited to, to move this ordinance tonight. Thank you. Excellent background. Any, other, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. 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 Okay, consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. May I move R92 through R98? Second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. <coughs> yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher registry? The current 
current fund, $436,480.45. The general capital fund, $327,087.71. The electric operating fund, $130,730.17. Water operating fund, $24,907.78. The water capital fund, $51,859.82. And for the trust, $19,039.41. The total is $990,105.34. Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. A new business. Uh, I'd like to make the following appointments requesting council confirmation. This is just um, th these two positions were appointed by title. We just want to put the names to the uh, position. So the local emergency planning council, Sarah Fisher, is a board of education rep, one year term through December 31st, 2020. Sustainable Madison Advisory Committee, Steve Tindell. Uh, Board of Education Rep, one year term through December 31st, 2020. Yes. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Before one other new business, as a reminder that we are not meeting on the fourth Monday this month. We will be meeting on March 30th. So uh, please adjust your calendars accordingly. Not 23rd, but on the 30th. That's um, people can attend the Taste of Madison and we'll have a the uh, introduction of the um, uh, budget at that meeting. So we'll have the extra time to get everything prepared. And with that. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. We'll catch up after a couple of uh, longer meetings. So let's... Yeah. Thank you.